That's how you're live. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hope you remembered that we had our live lesson today. It's Monday at 1130 Central Time. So here we are. We didn't post a reminder video or a, or a little, you know, preview thing to uh, remind you. So if you're here, would love to hear from you. Send a, just make a little comment there, live chat here on YouTube. Let us know where you're coming from, or, uh, what you're up to. Maybe any questions you might have about music or piano or anything, you know, about what we're doing. Um, while we're waiting for everybody, everyone to come on, we have a great lesson show for you today. Uh, we're going to be doing learning something I compose myself. Uh, I think it's important to compose. We're going to talk about composing and writing music and how it's, you know, it, it's not just for the elite musician. You know, it's for, for everybody to do, uh, being creative with music. Um, it's really a lot easier than you might think if you've never tried it, if you do, you know, certain things. Uh, we're also going to look at a Nirvana song. <laughs> We've been doing, uh, you know, Bach and classical music. And to tell you the truth, you know, rock music and, and things, they're not that far removed from classical music, just music in general. There's always uh, things that have common threads and connectors we're going to look at today. But what have we been up to, Shauna? This week, yesterday was was hard because we finally go, got to go back to church in person. Uh, we're in Waco. We go to you know big Antioch Church in, in Waco, and uh, uh, we've been you know doing it at home, doing the live stream at home because of COVID and everything. But now we we finally went back, and so we get all the kids up, and we actually get out the door and get to to church to to start at nine o'clock, which is an undertaking when you have four kids. Yeah, I'm not gonna right? lie, that uh, was a hard habit to break. <laughs> watch getting up and watching the live stream on yeah the couch. you just make coffee and get up and just plop down on the couch you know there's something about being there you know in uh in person so uh we just started going back so but shauna is usually you know sunday's a rest day for a lot of people but for her it's her biggest work day would you tell tell everybody what you do on sunday oh Sean, <laughs> you don't want to i pick All up right. groceries i cook mm -hmm. food for everybody meal prep for the week do laundry yeah, so she's just going all day Sunday, getting ready for the week. And so, and then to, you know, go to church in the morning, come home and do that. It's been, well, she was exhausted yesterday. And uh, yeah, so yesterday was, was kind of kind of tough. I kind of felt under the weather myself. Just, you know, I'm still on the slow carb diet. Some days <laughs> I have, you know, kind of low, a dip. I think you got to have some carbs, you know. And so I'm kind of, a, you know, when I do something, I like to do it all the way, you know. 100%. So uh, I probably am not eating enough carbs. You're supposed to have some, you know. So uh, I'm not yeah. even going to comment. <laughs> I need to introduce some carbs in there. I'm still on the fifth notch on the belt. You know, I started <laughs> at notch two. I'm on the fifth one, trying to get the number six. But it's always hard. You know, you, you have that initial weight loss, and you're like, yeah. And then it just kind of slows down. You're like, hey, I'm still doing it. I'm still working out. I'm still you know, doing Peloton and everything. Wanna... Okay, Sean, I'm going to bring it back to piano. Okay. So Kevin has a question here. All he right. says, I have my piano here, but I have no idea where to start. And it feels daunting to sit down <laughs> not knowing where to start. Yes. All right. So you're knowing where to start. Well, <clears throat> first you have to decide, <laughs> are you going to, you know, do you want to play by ear? Do you want to play by note? What, what are you looking for? Um, if you're wanting to play, you know, most people aren't, wanting to go the classical music reading note way uh that's just my experience you know a lot of how, how old is kevin if you don't mind me asking and he says he's a singer by the way okay he's a singer so uh what what age group are we looking at for him and um i don't know you know is he is he a kid is he a young man is he <laughs> yeah that because that's gonna kind of make a little difference but um if he's a singer and he's just wanting he to says he's 40 okay all right great and so, you know, if you just, you like singing, you know, pop, rock music, that type of thing, great, because it's great to accompany yourself, you know, and play while you're singing. That's a wonderful thing to be able to do. It's very satisfying, very enjoyable. And where to start? Um, well, I always say during my lessons, you've got to pick the right lessons, and you've got to know how to practice those two things. Whether you get that from me or not, you have to pick the right lessons, and you have to know how to practice. Um, if you pick stuff that's too hard, that's out of your league, you're going to fail. Even if you're a good musician, even if you've got talent, even if you love music, you're going to fail if you pick something that's too hard. You have to pick things that are on your level, okay? And that means very beginner stuff, and you have to play a lot of it, a lot of it. You know, quantity is more important than the quality, especially in the beginning. You want to play a lot of things, 
and you, you need to know how to practice. And that means sticking with one song and working on that one song till you have it down, and then you move to another one, but still playing that one song that you first learned. You get a repertoire, one, two, three, four, five songs of easy things because a lot of people will spread themselves too thin. Maybe they'll pick a piece that's not too hard, but they won't finish it, and they'll move on to something else, and they just know all these little bits and pieces of songs. That doesn't really help you either. So you have to know how to practice. And so you need to find a teacher, whether online or in person, that will help you pick the right lessons it's also got to be something you like. Don't play Bach if you don't like Bach, okay? So Kevin is in like a cover band, sort okay. of. So. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, I, I highly recommend my lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, have, I've had a lot of success over the past uh, 15 years doing this on YouTube. I've taught since I was like 16 years old. I'm 47. And uh, all that experience that I've had teaching people one-on-one, -on -one, because I taught for like, you know, six hours a day for a couple of decades, um, you learn what works for people and what doesn't. And I feel like my, my library on webpianoteacher.com is, is the best thing that I know of for someone like Kevin. Um, and, and if you are on the website, you know, if you actually get a membership and try it on webpianoteacher.com, you want to start with what's called the Easy Piano Lesson Series. You click the WPT University at the top of the page, and then you'll see Easy Piano Lesson Series. Now, that's available to any level member. It's not just you know, family and friend members, it's also available to partner level, so everyone can have access to it. When you buy the PDF for that one, you get the PDF for the whole 50 lessons. I don't sell them into, you know, one at a time, you know, trying to make more money. I put it all in once. You get all 50 lessons in one PDF so that people, beginners, can get what they need. I would start with that, and I would do exactly the things that I say in those videos. I give you all the information that you need as a beginner, either as a beginner to music, or if you're new to my method, you need that. So <clears throat> that's, my, that's my part. That's really my truthful personal advice. If you're where Kevin is, you're, you know, 30, 40 years old, and you sing, and you're in a band, and you don't know where to start, <clears throat> hey, that, that's, that's my wheelhouse. That's, that's what I teach. <clears throat> that's what I'm good at. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> easy piano lesson series on web piano teacher. I need a drink here. Clear my throat. <clears> throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, if you guys are listening through headphones, you know what I have to deal with all the time. <clears throat> Sean's constantly clearing his throat. Yeah. <clears throat> <throat> <laughs> but I can't help it. It's just the way I'm built, I guess. Allergies. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because my little, my son does it. He's like, he's nine. And I hear him get up in the morning. <clears throat> you know, it's just hilarious. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> to me, it is. Wooter <clears throat> asked you if, if that was scotch. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that, I'd have some problems. <laughs> if I was doing that. No, it's just, it's uh, purified water. You did used to take a few <clears throat> shots of some fire cider. Yeah, that, that was allergy. good. Right. It has, it has like everything you can think of that's hot, it's spicy. They put it in this thing and concentrate and you just, you know. Gross. You just rips the hide off and <laughs> Wooter also said uh when I'm tired he that you probably play smooth romantic piano and I can put my feet up uh <laughs> when when, when, does, when he's tired no when I'm tired oh okay I think they're all they're always glad when I stop because I'm always playing yes. and they're, they're glad when I no matter what I'm playing just <laughs> quiet <laughs> but you know what I love is uh you know I try to teach my older two kids uh, I got two boys, one's 17, one's 15, and just couldn't do it, you know. And there was a song I was going to write called Tears on My Banjo <laughs> for my, my younger son because I was trying to have him play the banjo, which he expressed an interest in. My older son played guitar, and, we, you know, they just they fought and cried, and I thought, you know, this is not how it's supposed to be. So I left him alone, and I, I, I got him some lessons, some piano lessons from someone else because, you know, they don't think I know anything. No. <laughs> and <clears throat> that was okay. But now they both play. They don't, they don't watch my lessons. They find other people's <laughs> lessons on YouTube. And my son Carter plays the guitar. He loves John Mayer and he's you know, all kind of rock and roll and country and everything. And he, he plays all the time. In fact, you know, we, we, get, we have to make him go in his room because it gets to be too much. Uh, and then my other son plays the ukulele. And he just loves it. So and yeah. he plays all the time as well. Yeah, here here's this here's the scene, guys. I was okay. tired and I just wanted to watch a basketball game. And Sean was playing piano and Carter was playing guitar. And I was like, 
Can I just lay here and watch the basketball game, please? <laughs> yeah. And speaking of basketball, March Madness, go Baylor uh, here in Waco, Texas. So we're excited. The, the, the women and the men uh, college basketball teams are, are, are to the, what, Elite Eight now is what they call it? Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. All right. So somebody has a, another interesting question, which I already know the answer. Okay. They said Bach or Beethoven? <laughs> If I had to choose one, I mean, if I had to choose one, it would be Bach. Yeah, Bach is, uh, think of it like this. You have all these amazing composers, geniuses, Mozart, Beethoven. Um, you could even put John Williams in that group, you know, who wrote the music for Star Wars. And it, I, I really think he's, he's in there with that group, um, to me. <clears throat> um, you know, just the great Chopin, Schumann. The great, you know, Brahms, the great composers. Bach is above them all. He just sits atop uh, of them all. And what's great is, you know, all the other composers kind of, they, you know, uh, evolved. They were, they struggled in their music. They, they uh, you know, when, when they uh, had, you know, were going somewhere with it. They were searching for something. Bach, from the very beginning, is just perfect. Every piece Every piece he ever wrote, and he wrote so much music. I think it just flowed out of him. He never, you know, had any mistakes when he was writing. He just, it was just coming out of his brain, and he just wrote it all out. In fact, if someone were to write, not even, uh, you know, compose, but just continually write the music of Bach, it would take like two decades for one person to write all the music that we have. And that's not even including the music we don't have um, from him. Uh, but definitely, I, I would... I would choose Bach, but I love Beethoven as well. They both, you know, are, are fulfilling and satisfying. But, you know, Bach's just above them all, in my opinion. But um, we're going to get, are we, any more questions? We'll get to the lesson here. Why don't we get to the lesson? Okay, great. <clears throat> so everyone who's joined, glad to have you. Again, we do this every Monday, 1130 Central Time, 1130 a.m. And what I did is I actually composed a little bit. Um, and I, I composed a fugue, okay? A fugue is something that Bach would have written. It's a type of, of piece. It's, a, it's a, just a type of music where you have something called a subject, and all it is is a repeated melody line, and it keeps showing up all the way through the piece, and it's called the fugue subject, and the fugue subject is made out of that, that one melody line that keeps occurring in the soprano, the tenor, the bass, every, and then it'll go in a minor key, or it'll be, or Bach will flip it upside down, and, you know, Bach wrote a lot of fugues. Beethoven also did as well. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that's what I did. So I took a little melody. I'm going to play it for you here. And let's see, let me go back to just piano sound. Okay, so... This is the little, I have songs for my kids, all of them, and I sing them all the time, and they, you know, they're not really relevant anymore because they're not little babies in diapers, but... Uh, okay, that's a little song I used to do, or I still do, for uh, my youngest son. So we do that, and he knows the song's coming up. He's my child. <laughs> but anyway that's the melody and so I just took that melody and I thought it would be cool I thought it would be cool to make a fugue out of that one line to show you guys you know what's possible um, and you can see the the highlighting here green yellow blue because the fugue when you start a fugue and I'm telling you this because when, if you ever listen to a fugue, it will really make it a lot more interesting to you because you'll understand the structure of it, okay? Uh, it's not magic, okay? Um, it will enter all by itself first, and I have it in the soprano. You know soprano, alto, tenor, bass, right? High women, high, lower women, uh, high male voice, and the lowest male voice, four people, four parts. And even though no one's singing this, they could sing it, um, that's, that's how, what you call the part. So you have these four going on at once. So of course I did the hardest thing you can do, a four voice fugue. Um, but I start in the soprano. In the green. Dun, 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 dun. We'll get to the board in a minute, but I just want to... Then, then I'm going to go to yellow here, okay? And the tenor does it in a, in a different key, but... He's my dun, 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 dun. 
we're going to go to the blue. And the alto has it again, the original key. And then what's left? The bass. And then I'll do it in the key of C here. Now, what's interesting about this, or the, the struggle, the, the, the problem, is to write melodies for the other voices that work while the subject of the fugue is going on. And that can be kind of tricky. And I really, <clears throat> when I started it, it's, it's very tricky to do unless you're used to doing it. Um, I was having a lot of trouble, a ton of trouble, um, trying to make all the voices work because I was trying to write it to make it work. And then finally I just thought, you know what, let me just hear what comes to my head because I've been playing a lot of Bach lately and let's see what comes in my head. So I did that and this is what came out and it worked just fine, just let, <laughs> letting that happen. Now there's still a craft that goes on that you have to do to make it work, but this is the fugue and I, I wrote it out and you know, you guys of course can learn it if you want. It's kind of hard to read the, the notation here the way I wrote it, but uh, you're welcome to learn it. would love to hear somebody play it at least this first part. Now, this is not a whole fugue. It's just what's called the exposition, where each voice enters and plays the thing. Now, we're going to, in a minute, get to some nirvana, and you're thinking, oh, how are you going to go from, from uh, <laughs> Bach, you know, to nirvana? Now hey, I'm interested. Yes, we're going we're to get to there. All right? So this is mainly for your, you know, education, for you to look, you know, see, because music is made out of repetition. I mean, you think about a song. Um, you have a chorus that repeats over and over. Yeah, even a verse that repeats. Um, you even within the verse will have a melody line that may repeat uh, higher or lower. There's it, so it's it's on the macro level and it's on the micro level. Repetition, okay. You have a good little motive of a couple of notes, and then you just keep manufacturing. The the whole song will come out of that. And these people writing songs don't even realize they're doing that, but that's really what's happening. Music, a big part of music is repetition, okay. So as we get to the board and we learn this, we try to. We start with a B, and these are reading notes here. If you want to get really good at reading notes, I recommend an app. Um, there's tons of them that help you kind of learn the names of the notes. I'm just going to tell you the names here, though. B, D, E, D, 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 and then B, D, A, G, G, G. So that's the subject of my fugue, the little song I wrote for my son. One, two, three, and four, and now... Here's the, when the second <clears throat> one enters. Uh, and you don't want to enter in the same key. You want to enter in maybe the dominant key, the five key. So that's what I did. I did a G chord here, and then I'm going to do key of D here. F sharp, A, B, A, 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 F sharp, A, E, D, D, D. So I have the first one and the second one. So can we play them one at a time? The trick is the soprano needs to keep going with a what's called a counter subject, some, something that um, fits and sounds good with the line that I already wrote off the left hand. And there are chords in this, but they're kind of hidden. You're not just playing a block chord, so that adds to the difficulty of writing a little bit. But A, G, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, E, G, F sharp. So I have F sharp automatically because of the key signature. And then that C is going to be sharp. Ba ba bum, bum bum bum. If I try to put them together, I have. Hear how I brought out that left hand? So a lot of times when you're playing, and I, this is why I love this because this is kind of like Bachian. You know, it's Bach didn't write this, but um, it's in that style. You know, um, you can teach. So, music is so connected. Um, you know, again, one of the things is repetition. Another thing is when you're on the piano, on the keyboard, we can bring out certain things and, and sound totally different. So I want to make sure my subject in yellow comes out, even though the other voice is on top, because you have another voice on top, it's going to tend to be heard more unless you really bring out that left hand by playing it louder. All right, so back to the board. So I don't want to do this. I want to play it like this. See, you heard it because I played it loud, and, and it's repetition, so that will um, stick in your mind. Think of the fugue subject as the hook of the song. 
Mm. Now, here's where it gets a little more tricky. So here's the fugue subject again. Shauna, you can always inter inter interject with some comment or question if you want. All right, so there's the alto. So what I'm going to do, make sure I know that and I hear it in my head. Now I'm going to add this soprano note. Now if I put them together, I have... Oh, sorry. Did you hear the blue? Do, 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 There it is. So I'll work on my right hand a little bit. And then I'm ready to add my left hand. I'm serious. If somebody learns this, I want to hear it. So D, C, B, A, G, F sharp. Now here's what's the counter subject. The right hand, the, the soprano had the counter subject first, but now I'll put the counter subject in the tenor because the tenor just finished the subject. So I'll write the same thing because I know it works for the left hand or for uh, underneath while the top's going. Bum, D, B, A, G, F sharp, G, A, B, A, C, B. Remember that? This had it. So all I do is recycle what I had. So I have, so here we go. Hear that? So now you have three subjects. So here's another thing we do in practicing because I'm kind of learning this <laughs> with you guys. Well, yeah, somebody, uh, James just said that looks a little tough to learn oh yeah it is it is it's it's <laughs> it, it is it would be in fact I'm, I'm having to kind of learn it part of the reason it's tough is because my chicken scratch here it's hard to kind of tell where the where the note heads are and everything and I don't have the letters in like a lot of you guys like the the letters written in there um but yeah it is 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 a little tough um so what I was going to get to is repetition I'm not trying to play the whole thing at once I played the first part I played this the second Subject, now I did right hand separately and then left hand, then I put them together. Now I'm going to put that link in the chain without trying to force myself to go on yet. That's what it means when I say how to practice. Because I know it's going to be too much of a stretch for me. I'm not going to really learn it well if I try to force myself to go on before I'm ready. Okay, so here we go. We're going to play from the beginning to that point. And go. Listen to that subject. Do, 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 do. Okay, one more time right there. Okay, so Nirvana's coming up in just a minute. I got one more, one more subject to do, and that's the bass, because I finished the bass. I could have wrote a two-voice fugue. I could have wrote a three, but of course I, I got to do the, the most, the four voice for you. You can even have five, you know, if you got an organ and your feet can do the pedals, oh my but gosh. that's, uh, I'm not going to mess with that right now. <laughs> okay. So back to the board is our last one. The bass. Notice I'm changing, doing it in different keys. Started out in the key of G, went to the key of D, uh, back to G. Now I'm going to do it in the subdominant, the key of C. <clears throat> All right. So. This is mainly just kind of educational for you to watch and go, oh, that's neat. And it expands your mind and um, helps you in other areas. All right, so the left hand, I'm going to add that top part. Now notice my counter subject is a little bit different this time. And you can do that whenever you get the four voices going. It's hard to always make everything fit. Oh. So you have this little mold, you know, this little kind of way it's normally done. And then you break that mold a little bit here and there within reason. And, um, you know, according to the music, you could, the, the ultimate goal is that it sounds good. Okay. All right. So back to the board, we have, uh, we did the left hand one more time. Da, 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 da. Here's the right hand.
let's say, and then I'll have it, what's called an episode coming up. Anyway, so hands together real slow. Okay, let me do it again, a little slower. All right, so we have the four voices. Now, I'm ready to try it all together from the beginning to end, and then we'll get to the Nirvana song, okay? All right, very beginning. Here's the subject. See if you can listen for the subject every time it comes in. do more and I think eventually I'll write a little episode that comes after that um, so I'm gonna turn the front camera again uh, okay <laughs> well, what's the matter oh no it just <laughs> takes me a minute okay so also Sean we're at about 26 oh very good okay minutes. good good um, right before we get to the Nirvana song I just want to say um, yeah so cre writing I just wanted to do I just felt like you know creating something and even if it's not some big thing um, it's neat just to write a little something. And if, if you like to write songs, just putting a few chords together, play a couple of C chords, a couple of G chords, a couple of F chords, maybe an A minor in there, and then write, you know, sing something with it. <clears throat> um, and it doesn't have to be wonderful, it doesn't have to be complete, but just writing something, composing even, even without, you know, an intention to do anything with it is a great outlet for yeah, us. I'm surprised you actually didn't sing the words you have to the song. Okay. <laughs> well, Matt, do I need to do that? Maybe that would encourage everybody. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter what you. Okay. All right, we can do that. Are. Now, that, I'm, <laughs> keep in mind, I wrote this when he was, when I used to like a newborn rock him to sleep with a bottle, a passy, and then to bed. That it had to be done that way in that order, and the same chair and the same everything had to be just the same every time. But in the song, I would sing. Well, you've heard it in the subject. He's my joy, buddy. He's my tickle, buddy. He is daddy's baby. He is, he's my one and only. All right, now he's he's nine, and he kind of still lets me sing it, but I, I imagine <laughs> soon he'll dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not a baby. Anyway, I've got some other songs that would really embarrass them. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but composing. So it doesn't have to be, you know, this. Something like that. I, of course, I you know want to do. Uh, I want to see what I can do. I like to test you know the limits and see. I'm, I wonder if I can write a four voice fugue. And I had a lot of trouble until I just let let the music you know kind of write itself in in my head and then write down what I hear. And you might find that too. Instead of trying to write it, trying to sing, just get away from the piano and let a melody kind of form itself in your head. And then go and see if you know and it'll change a little bit as you go to the piano, but um, that's kind of a, a way to get started doing that. Just try it. See what happens for you. Okay. Uh, if there's any more questions or comments. Well, we have so many comments going. Everybody is just giving all the encouragements today. Oh, I good. love it so much. Good. So Enc Wooter is here, of course. Hey, and Wooter. Bill. And they were going back and forth. Everybody's uh, giving Wooter a high five good. basically on his video good. in the last newsletter. But here's an interesting thing. So Wooter said, the funny thing is, he is learning so much from watching his own video. Oh, yeah. From his position yeah. behind the piano. And so, oh, we lost the front camera. Okay, I'll turn it back on. Actually, we lost both cameras. Yeah, because it's been 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, but for all of you people who are afraid to get in front of the camera, even if you just do it for yourself and watch it back. And the other thing... Uh, Every time Wooter watches his own video, he gets more pleased with it. Oh, good. I just love that because... <laughs> yeah, that's a way. I was going to mention that one time and I keep forgetting. You know, when I say learn, play, share, learn is the, you know, the work that you saw me do 
uh, playing is the playing through the songs that you kind of know, your group of two, three, four, five songs. Sharing is that part where you actually connect with another human being with your music. Recording yourself is actually a way to do that because it, 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 it takes you out of yourself and you get to see, like, like Wooter's doing, and that really has a positive effect on you, just recording yourself for playback for yourself or for other people. But it is very encouraging. In fact, most people are kind of surprised. They think they, they sound better than they thought they did when they watch the recording. So if you're thinking, oh, it's going to be worse, most of the time for people, it's better uh, when they watch it back. So uh, Even for us, yeah. uh, just with that Willie Nelson <clears throat> song mm-hmm. that we wrote, Mm -hmm. You were like not real pleased with it or whatever, or any, any time we do a recording, we're not real happy with it while we're doing it. And then when we hear it back later, we're kind of like surprised. Yes. We're too critical. Pretty good. And we actually had an idea of trying to polish and doing a separate recording. Then we thought, you know what? We want people to see the raw on the spot singing and playing because that's what it's really like for everyone. So we want to be as real with you guys as we can. So as you watch the podcast, you know, be kind (laughs) because we're on the spot doing it, you know? Uh, Anyway, so we can't wait for the next one. We're working on Carol King right now. Oh, you revealed it. We're supposed to, you did, you did that last week. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Let's go back and watch the live lesson. I said, can we say, and you go, yeah, I I don't think I did. I think we were, Oh, yeah, we well. did. I remember for sure because I didn't wasn't going to say anything. And then I asked Kenley okay. and you go, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James is was really happy with last week's hymn lesson. He's uh-huh. been working on it. So. Oh, the hymn. Great. Very good. Very good. good. Uh, Jay, he also wants to hear us sing a duet. And then okay. Phil suggested, I got you, babe, like Sonny and Cher. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't think I could do that uh, without like... A Saturday night, Saturday night Live like parody version. Yeah, I can't <laughs> hear that song without thinking of Groundhog Day and Phil <laughs> Phil Murray. Bill Phil Murray. Phil Murray. You said Phil Murray. Wait, but what, what's his name? Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Murray. I can't. Groundhog Day. Yeah. Every morning, I got you. <laughs> Put your little hand in mine. Great movie. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay. Let's get to Nirvana. All right, Nirvana. We'll wrap it up. So I was going to connect Bach to Nirvana because what I wanted to show is that you have in this, this type of writing, which is called polyphonic, where you have, which just means two voices going on at once. Homophonic means you have like a chord and then a melody, you know, just a straight chord, like a guitar strumming and someone singing. That's homophonic. You have two things going, one's chord, one's, well, a lot of, you know, you tend to think of that as being simpler and then this being as more complicated. Well, um, Kurt Cobain for Nirvana did polyphonic things all the time. I'll show you one. Um, if we go to the, the, I don't have it written out, but you know, his little bass line or his little guitar line. Okay. That song, Come As You Are. Come as, and let's see. I didn't practice. No, you did not. I'll have to. Oops. It's hard. Got it. Oh, sorry. Now, why is that hard? It's not hard to play one hand at a time because I know the melody for both, but the rhythmically is hard. It's hard to play that left hand and play the right hand together because of the rhythms are so different. But that's what he does. He, that's polyphonic. He's got one melody up here that he's singing, of course, but then this. He has two things going on once. Okay, so <laughs> I was just going to give up in a second. <laughs> I was getting nervous. I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> but 
there we go. That's and and again, you get to see it raw right there. I, I was having trouble. I couldn't get it, and then then I got it. Starting on the wrong note in the right hand. People um, are probably going to be frustrated that that was you having trouble. Okay, Bella. but but here's the thing. It, it's the same for all of us. I, I may have, you know, it's real sped up for me because you know I've practiced a lot. You know, I've worked really hard my whole life, so the the the, the learning curve is going to be a lot quicker for me. But I still had to go through it, right? I still had to sit there and figure it out and think about it like you do. Now, you'll have you know, more time to have to, to work on something, but it never changes for any of us. Now, as we get better and better and better, that amount of time we have to work shortens. And we get better as musicians as we learn, play, share, as we work on stuff technically, as we play through the songs that we already know in our repertoire every day, and then as we share it with others, either by recording yourself like Wooter did, or um, playing for someone else, showing someone else a video or something you record, posting a, a video of yourself playing, just getting together, playing for other people. That's so important. So there we go. I did it <laughs> somehow. Way to go. Um, I'll go back to the front camera here. Any last comments or questions before we... Uh, Mary would like us to do a lesson for How Great Thou Art, I think okay. is what she was asking. All right. How great. Um, so another another hymn? Yeah, but lesson. we actually, we do have that one on the website. If Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, one of your hymn arrangements. Right. It's a hymn arrangement, yeah. How Great Thou Art. So it's not just the four-part, you know, dry kind of thing. It's act an actual arrangement I wrote for that song on my piano teacher dot com. Uh, you know, many years back, but it's still a good good arrangement. The music's still good. <laughs> yeah, somebody uh, that's been watching on this live stream said that they've been a member since the actual whiteboard days. Oh wow, yeah, the <laughs> actual whiteboard. Yeah, it's kind of nostalgic, but I'm so glad to not have to do that anymore. Oh my gosh, the the you know had these whiteboards and I couldn't use the whole board I had to take the metallic you know thing out and then it's making this noise whoosh, you know like thunder and my kids keep uh well one kid in particular <laughs> won't quit touching it and cutting his finger don't touch don't touch and of course touch cut his finger cut his foot uh go on there and mark all over it or erase it <laughs> yeah or erase it so I get all the board written out you know it's perfect and I set it against the wall and then come in there and he's already uh, erased it or written all over <laughs> the top of it. He's 17 Gosh. now. Yeah. He still does those kinds yes, of things. Yes, and you'll also notice in the old days, I wrote from bottom to top. I, I have very few people mention that. I'm really surprised. That everybody just kind of catches on. But, you know, they wonder, why did you write from bottom to top and now you write from top to bottom? Because I'm an upside-down lefty. And if I wrote top to bottom on the whiteboard, my hand erases it as I'm going down the board. So <laughs> it's a lot easier that way to start bottom to top. So then I don't run my hand over it anyway. Well, you don't get many emails about it. Oh, do you? oh yeah. Shauna handles all the all the emails. I do get some emails yes. about uh, it. Yes. We got a great uh, lesson series coming up, a couple actually. One is Greg Allman. Um, what is it? Mid Midnight Rider? Yeah. 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 Really neat keyboard part on there. Working. already transcribed it. We're working on uh, recording lessons for it, getting it on the site for you guys. Uh, we'll do the next live lesson next week, next Monday at 11.30 a.m. Don't forget. See you here. Anything else? No. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, guys.